What's up guys, my name is Erica and today I'm going to show you how to make soap with aloe. Real aloe, not aloe juice from the store or whatnot. It's actually from aloe leaves. And yeah, let's get started. After you remove the aloe leaves from the plant, what you're gonna notice, it's, to, it's like releasing this yellow substance. It's actually latex, um, a type of latex of course. And what you do is you let it soak into a bucket and then every couple of hours you want to drain the bucket and put fresh water in there. And you're going to want to do that process until the water is clear. Once that water is clear, the aloe is safe to use in your soap. So now that it's all drained and clear, we're going to chop all this up. So what I like to do with my aloe is I actually like to cut them up into little chunks versus cutting the entire leaf. I feel like that makes the process go by a lot quicker. Um, so as you see here, I cut them up into smaller chunks. Um, I, I leave the tips intact because that's what I'm going to, I'm going to use that for a different project later. Well, honestly, I'm going to throw that in the freezer and use it for myself when I get a sunburn. Um, so you see me here cutting up the like prickly spines or the spikes on either side of the aloe. It just makes it easier to remove the skin. And um, as you can see, there is a curvature to the aloe, which one side's curved, the other side is more flat. So I typically start with the flat side first to remove that skin, you know, try to get as much as possible. Can't waste any of that precious gel. that to the side. Now with the curvature curve side I'm going to kind of roll as I'm cutting trying to, trying to keep my knife as flat as I can on my cutting board and it just it's an easier way to get the most gel off the skin. And it is a little tricky at this point because obviously gel is very slimy and trying to keep a hold of it is very tricky. Always be aware where your fingers are at. Always. Especially handing a super sharp knife like this one. It does take a little practice to get, you know, really good at removing the skin. I'm by no means a professional at removing the skin off aloe. Um, I've just done it so many times in my life that it just this is the way that I like to do it and all of the skins that you see off to the side I do put into my garden right back into the aloe pots and there you see there's a gel that's what it looks like it's obviously a little tricky to get on camera but you can see like the little vein work on the inside it's super slimy and it's <laughs> It's a little fun to play with, as you can see. <laughs> and I'm just going to repeat the process until I'm done. If you have a cutting board that has kind of a texture grip to it, it's it works great. I suggest the plastic ones versus the wooden ones. Um, I just feel like the wooden ones, they kind of stick really, really good to the wooden ones. So the plastic ones are nice. And the type of knife that I'm using here is a fish fillet knife dedicated to my soaping studio. It's a little flexible. Um, I can bend it. It helps me get her, you know, on that curvature to cut and remove most of the skin. When I go to cut up aloe, I pretty much dedicate a day of doing this. I have a large garden full of aloe. I have said this before, I live in Florida and this stuff grows, it's basically a weed around here. I can take it out of the pot, throw it on the ground and it will continue to grow. It's a really awesome plant. It's kind of funny, I'm in a uh, local gardening group and we always have aloe to trade for another plant and everyone's like, we have aloe, we don't need any aloe.
And after this process, we are going to blend it up with our water. So what we have here is our one-to-one -one ratio of aloe gel and distilled water. I'm going to blend this together until smooth, run it through a strainer to remove all the fibrous content and the, the skin of the aloe so it's nice and smooth. That way our lye incorporates nicely. I'm going to use my trusted stick blender and I'm going to blend this until it's really smooth. Um, I don't know why I tapped out the uh, air bubbles in the head of the stick blender. I guess it's force a habit. As you can see here, we have a lot of little bubbles, but that doesn't matter at this point. We're going to end up freezing this mixture in an ice cube tray. That way the lye doesn't burn it. So air bubbles don't matter. So now that it's all smooth and blended, I'm going to strain this quite a few times to remove as much fibrous content and skin as I can possibly get out of it. Then I'm going to pop it into ice cube molds and let it freeze for a couple days. So I unfortunately lost the footage of me making the lye water solution with the ice cubes, but it's as simple as this. You are going to put your ice cubes into your lye container and then you're going to fill up the rest of your water per your recipe into the container with the ice and then you're going to continue and add your lye uh, to your water and ice cubes as you would any other time. It's just that simple. So now that the prep work is done, it's time to make soap. Here we have my Macca's Manacle Pea, which is one of my favorite greens to work with. It's like a yellowish green color. It's like my staple green color. I use it pretty much anytime I need green. And then the other one I'm going to use is Lounge Lizard, which is like an olive green with a gold tone. Super gorgeous color. And then you have titanium dioxide diluted down in water. So the fragrance we're going to use today is aloe vera and cucumber, which is by far the best, like cucumber, like soft melon, a little bit of greenery scent that Nature's Garden has. Uh, I was watching Soy and Shea and she used it and recommended it and you know what? It's awesome. It worked out great. The soap notes on the fragrance, there's no acceleration, no discoloration, no racing, no separation, and strong scent retention. Oh my goodness, it's a fabulous fragrance. I think it worked re well for this soap. And there I am pouring my lye solution into my oils. I don't use sodium lactate. I try to keep the labels looking pretty, so I actually use sea salt, uh, like chunky sea salt, and I dilute it down in the water before I add my lye. And that does basically the same thing as sodium lactate. And just give it a quick stir and then I'm going to blend. Now that it's blended and it's reached a, an emotion, we are going to make the rest of the soap. Enjoy!